Hi friends, welcome back to Nurses Nook and Corner. Now it's time for Let's Make It Easy. If you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the uploaded videos. This update is regarding the scales, tools, and scores that are used in clinical setting to monitor the patient and improve the quality care in nursing. Today, we are going to look into Braden's scale. So what's that? It is a simple tool that assess the risk of pressure injury. That is, you're going to assess the patient and provide a score whether they may risk pressure injury or not. Why we need this? The global statistics have given that nearly 2.5 million patients have been affected by hospital-acquired pressure ulcers. So we need this scale to assess the risk of pressure injury so that we can prevent them from pressure ulcers. Pressure ulcer results in significant patient harm, such as pain, expensive treatments, increased length of stay, and premature mortality. So it is important to assess the skin integrity so that we can prevent from pressure ulcer. To make the patients happy and safe, we can assess the skin appropriately with the tool Braden Scale. Now let's see the components of Braden. There are totally six components. Those are sensory perception, moisture, activity, mobility, nutrition, and friction. Let's see the first component, sensory perception. In simple, we can say it has ability to detect the skin, whether it respond to pain to the pressure parts of their body. So we can give a score of one when the patient has limited ability to feel pain over most of the body, so we can say it is completely limited. Score two is given when the patient has sensory impairment, which limits the ability to feel pain over half of the body. That is, we can say it is very limited. Score 3 is given when the patient has sensory impairment, which limits ability to feel pain over one or two extremities. That is, we can say it is slightly limited. Score 4 is given when the patient has no sensory deficit. That is, they will be, have the ability to feel pain or discomfort. So we can say it has no impairment. Thus, we can give a score of 4 if they have ability to feel pain. If they doesn't have ability to feel pain over the body, the limited score of 1 can be given. Let's see the second component. Moisture, that is degree to which the skin is excessively or continuously moisturized so that they pose a risk to compromise in the integrity of skin, causing risk of epidermal erosion. So we can see the score one given as constantly moist so that where the skin is kept moist almost constantly by perspiration, that is wet or urine. Score two, very moist is given when the skin is often but not always moist so linen must be changed at least once in a shift. Occasionally moist requires an extra linen change approximately once in a day. And a score four is given to a patient who is rarely moist and requires changing of linen only at frequent intervals. The third component is activity. The activity is degree of physical activity that a patient is able to do. Let's see the scoring. Score one, that is bed fast. The patient is completely bedridden and confined to bed. Score two is given to a patient who is chair fast. That is the patient ability to walk is severely limited and must be assisted into chair or wheelchair. Score three is given for patient who walks occasionally for very short distance with or without assistant, but spends majority of time in bed or chair. And a score four is given to a patient who walks frequently outside the room at least twice a day and inside the room at least once every two hours during the waking hours. Let's see the fourth component, mobility that is, ability to change and control body position. The score one is given when patient completely immobile. That is, the patient does not even make slight changes without assistant. Score two is given as very limited. That is, the patient changes the position occasionally, but not independently. They need assistant to change the position. Score three is given as slightly limited. That is, frequent changes are made independently by the patient. And a score four, is given as no limitation that is major, and the position changes will be frequent without any assistance. The fifth component is nutrition. That is the food intake pattern of the patient is assessed to find out the level of nutrition in patient. So score one, very poor, is given when the patient is in NPO status, clear liquids or IV fluid for more than five days. Score two is given as probably inadequate, that is, the patient receive liquid diet or tube feeding that not meet the patient requirement. Score 3 is given as adequate. 
that is tube feeding or TPN probably which meets the nutritional needs of the patient. And finally, score four, which is given as excellent, does not require the any supplement The last sixth component is friction and shear. Force between skin and other surfaces may be mattresses. Score one is given as problem, that is they need moderate to maximum assistance in moving the patient. Score two is given as potential problem. That is the patient able to move themselves feebly, but at least require a minimum assistance to move themselves. Score three is given as no apparent problem. That is the patient able to move themselves independently in bed or chair. For this component, three is the maximum score. Time to check with the scoring pattern for Braden scale. 19 to 23, patient is not at risk. 15 to 18, preventative intervention must be done. 13 to 14, patient is at moderate risk. 10 to 12, patient is at high risk. 6 to 9, patient is at very high risk. As the score decreases, the patient is at more risk, and as the score increases, the patient is at no risk. Therefore, the minimum score is 6, which is at risk, and maximum score is 23, for which the patient is not at risk. When to do the Braden scale assessment? At the time of admission within 8 hours, reassessment should be done frequently based on the patient's condition. And if any significant changes occurs in the patient condition, we have to reassess the Braden scale. Current health acuity, skin assessment, use of medical devices, previous pressure ulcer, tissue oxygenation and perfusion, medication, Braden scale scores, comorbidities, is my patient at risk for pressure ulcer? Then what is the plan of care? If my patient has a Braden score of 15 to 18, then preventative intervention to be done, that is, the patient is at risk. What may be my plan of care? Regular turning schedule, enable as much activity as possible, protect the heels, use pressure distribution surfaces, manage moisture, friction, and shear. If my patient Braden score is 13 to 14, that is, the patient is at moderate risk, then what are my interventions? The same intervention should be done, which additional requires a few patient position at 30 degree lateral incline using foam wedges. If my patient Braden score is 10 to 12, that is, the patient is high risk, then what are the interventions? The same interventions to be followed. In addition to regular turning schedule, make small shifts in their position frequently, or every second hourly you can change the position of the patient to avoid the risk of pressure ulcer. If my Braden score is equal to nine or less than, then you have to follow the same intervention. In addition to this, add a pressure redistribution surface for patients with severe pain or with additional risk factors. So these are the preventive measures we have to follow for very high risk pressure ulcer patients. It's time to take care of our patients. Hope it's easy to understand. Thank you, friends. Keep watching and supporting. If you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe the channel.